Hi, I'm Dong Moon Min from Seoul National University. In this talk, I will talk about CryoCache, a fast, large, and cost-effective cache architecture for cryogenic computing. This work was done with my fellow students and my advisor, Professor Jang Woo Kim. As everyone knows, the conventional computing now suffers from the power wall and the memory wall problem. To resolve these problems, cryogenic computing has emerged as a highly promising solution. Cryogenic computing means computing at extremely low temperature. There are two benefits of cryogenic computing. The first benefit is the eliminated leakage current. The leakage current is almost eliminated at the low temperature, so we can greatly reduce the device power consumption. The second benefit is the reduced wire resistivity. The wire resistivity is linearly reduced with temperature, so we can build much faster memory. By using these benefits, cryogenic computing can reserve both power and the memory wall problem. Our previous work shows the potential of cryogenic computing focusing on DM devices. First, by using cryogenic low latency DM, we can increase the data center performance up to 2.5 times higher. Next, by using cryogenic low power DM, we can greatly reduce the data center power by 15%, even including the cooling cost. The result of our previous work is meaningful, but there is more room to achieve higher performance. Optimizing DM only cannot maximize the performance because DM handles only a small number of memory accesses. On the other hand, cache handles most of the memory accesses more than 99%. Therefore, cache is the main performance bottleneck in modern computer systems. To achieve much higher performance, we target cryogenic caches for the next step. However, there are three challenges in cryogenic cache research. First, we do not know the most promising memory technologies for cryogenic caches. Next, the absence of the cryogenic optimal cache architecture is another major challenge. Finally, we should overcome the huge cooling cost for cryogenic computing. To resolve these challenges, we set three research goals. First, we target to find the optimal memories for cryogenic caches. Second, we aim to propose the cryogenic optimal cache architecture. Finally, we target to show the performance gain and power reduction of cryogenic caches. From now on, I show the memory technologies for cryogenic caches. To find the cryogenic optimal memories, we analyze four major cache memories such as SRAM, 3TDM, 1T1CDM, and STTM. The analysis focuses on the behavior at the cryogenic temperature. We first analyze SRAM at 77 Kelvin. SRAM is the most popular memory due to the following benefits. First, SRAM is the fastest memory technology. Second, it has the low dynamic power consumption. However, SRAM suffers from the huge static power at the room temperature. The huge static power incurs the summer problem and the scaling problem in modern processors. Fortunately, the cryogenic temperature reserves this static power problem. The static power of SRAM is greatly reduced with temperature and it becomes 50 times lower at 77 Kelvin. Note that the static power reduction is higher in smaller nodes. That means the cryogenic benefit is bigger in modern technology nodes. In summary, the low temperature reserves the main challenges of SRAM. Therefore, we select SRAM as the first candidate for the cryogenic cache design. Next, we analyze 3TDM. 3TDM consists of three PMOS transistors. 
For the right operation, the right transistor turns on and stores the data in the transistor gate. For the read operation, the read transistor turns on and it drives the bit line. As the stored values are gradually leaked away, three TDM needs refresh operations. There are many benefits of three TDM. First, three TDM has twice higher cell density than SRAM because it consists only of three transistors. Second, 3TDM is compatible with logic process. Third, 3TDM has lower static power than SRAM thanks to the low leakage PMOS only structure. Finally, its access latency is similar with SRAM. However, 3TDM suffers from the short retention time at the room temperature. The short retention time needs many refresh operations and it makes huge performance overhead. Our simulation result shows that the short retention time reduces the IPC by 94%. Therefore, 3TDM cannot be used at the room temperature. Fortunately, the low temperature greatly reduces the refresh overhead. The graph shows the retention time of 3TDM. The green line means the safe line. If the retention time is higher than the safe line, the refresh overhead becomes negligible. Because the leakage current is almost eliminated at the low temperature, the retention time of 3TDM is greatly extended and it becomes over the safe line. Therefore, the refresh overhead is greatly reduced and we can use 3TDM at the low temperature. In summary, the low temperature reserves the main challenge of 3TDM. Therefore, we select 3TDM as the second candidate for the cryogenic cache design. As our third analysis, we analyze 1 to 1 CDM. 1 to 1 CDM consists of one transistor and one capacitor. 1 to 1 CDM also needs refresh operations. 1 to 1 CDM has many problems at the room temperature. First, 1 to 1 CDM needs extra process to build a capacitor. Second, 1 to 1 CDM is much slower than other memories. However, the retention time of 1 to 1 CDM is almost 10 times longer than the 3 TDM. Therefore, 1 to 1 CDM has negligible refresh overhead even at the room temperature. For this reason, 1 to 1 CDM is widely used at the room temperature. At 77 Kelvin, the retention time of 1 to 1 CDM is also extended. However, its retention time is already longer than the safe line even at the room temperature. Therefore, the refresh overhead at 77 Kelvin is similar to that of the room temperature. In summary, the low temperature does not affect the 1 to 1 CDM's behavior. Therefore, we exclude 1 to 1 CDM in our cache design. Finally, we analyze STTRAM at 77 Kelvin. STTRAM consists of one transistor and MTJ. MTJ stores data as the form of the resistivity. For the right operation, the high voltage should apply to MTJ to change the resistivity. This high voltage incurs the huge write power and latency. At the room temperature, the write latency is 8 times higher than the SRAM latency. The write power is also 3.5 times higher than the SRAM power. Unfortunately, the low temperature increases the write overhead of STTRAM. At the low temperature, the MTJ becomes more stable and more difficult to change its data. Therefore, the write latency becomes longer at the low temperature. The write power also becomes higher for the same region. In summary, the write overhead of STTRAM increases at 77 Kelvin. 
Therefore, we exclude STTRAM in our cache design. This is the summary of the analysis. The table shows the behavior at the room temperature. Let's move on to 77 Kelvin. The low temperature changes the behavior of memories. The temperature makes SRAM and 3TDM much better, but makes 1-1-CDM and STTM less attractive. Therefore, we select SRAM and 3TDM for the cryogenic cache design. Until now, we select optimal memories for cryogenic caches. From now on, we will introduce cryocache, the cryogenic optimal cache architecture targeting for high performance and low energy consumption. This is the overview of the section. We first build our cryogenic cache model. The model can predict the latency and power of cryogenic caches. Next, using the cache model, we find the optimal voltage level to reduce the dynamic power and the cooling cost. Finally, we proposed our optimal cache design in terms of the system performance and the energy consumption. We first introduce our cache model. We build the cache model on the existing memory model or cryoram. I briefly show how the cryoram works. First, based on the target voltage level, the MOSFET model predicts the low temperature MOSFET characteristics. Next, using the MOSFET values, the memory model finds the optimal memory design and predicts its latency and power. However, it cannot find the optimal cache design because the memory model does not have the cache model. To resolve the problem, we build SRAM and 3TDM model on the memory model. Therefore, the memory model can find the optimal cache design and predict its latency and power. It also supports voltage scaling because CryoRAM already supports the voltage scaling. Next, we find the optimal voltage level for cryogenic caches. We find the optimal voltage level to minimize power delay products. At the room temperature, the optimal voltage level is supply voltage of 0.8 volt and the threshold voltage of 0.5 volt. At the cryogenic temperature, the optimal voltage level becomes 50% lower than room temperature value. From now on, we use the voltage level for every cryogenic cache design. Based on the cache model and the voltage level, we analyze the latency of cryogenic caches. The graph shows the latency of room temperature SRAM, cryogenic SRAM, and cryogenic 3TDM. The latency values are normalized to the latency of room temperature SRAM of same area. Let me introduce the cryogenic SRAM. The red line is the latency of cryogenic SRAM. For small capacities, the cryogenic SRAM has twice higher speed with half density compared to 3TDM. That is, the cryogenic SRAM exactly fits with the latency-sensitive small size Daron design. On the other hand, for larger capacities, 3TDM provides twice higher density with minor speed difference compared to SRAM. That is, the cryogenic 3TDM exactly fits with the capacity-sensitive L2 and L3 design. Next, we analyze the energy consumption of cryogenic caches. The energy values are normalized to the energy of room temperature SRAM. First, cryogenic SRAM have lower dynamic energy thanks to the smaller decoder. That is, cryogenic SRAM exactly fits with the dynamic power dominant Aeron design. On the other hand, cryogenic 3TDM have lower static energy thanks to the low leakage PMOS only structure. That is, the cryogenic EDM exactly fits with the static power dominant L2 and L3 design. In summary, the energy consumption does not change the performance optimal design choices. 
Finally, we propose our cache architecture, or cryocache. SRM has the low access latency with the low dynamic energy at 77 Kelvin. These characteristics are suitable for add-on design. On the other hand, 3TDM provides twice higher capacity with lower static energy. These characteristics are suitable for L2 and L3 design. Based on the result, we propose CryoCache, the cryogenic optimal cache architecture. CryoCache consists of SRAM-based add-on design and 3TDM-based L2 and L3 design. From now on, we evaluate CryoCache in terms of the performance gain and the energy consumption. We compare the CryoCache with the baseline. The baseline system consists of room temperature SRM caches. For the energy consumption, we include energy for cryogenic cooling. We model the cooling energy to 10 times of the device energy consumption as other previous works. We use 11 parsec workloads for the evaluation. First, let me show the performance result. The graph shows the speed up and the black line means the baseline performance. When using cryogenic SRAM for every cache design, we can achieve higher speed up. Using the cryogenic EDM also improves the performance. However, our SRAM design cannot improve the capacity sensitive workloads such as Canyon and Stream Cluster. Our EDM design cannot improve the latency sensitive workloads such as FedOut, RTView, and Swaptions. On the other hand, CryoCache can boost both the latency-sensitive and capacity-sensitive workloads. The SRM-based add-on caches can improve the latency-sensitive workloads. The EDM-based L2 and L3 caches can improve the capacity-sensitive workloads. Therefore, CryoCache achieves the highest speedup. The speedup is 80% on average up to four times on string cluster. Next, let me show the energy consumption result. The left graph shows the cache energy breakdown, and the right graph shows the total energy consumption, including the cooling energy. CryoCache greatly reduces the error dynamic energy thanks to the voltage scaling. At the same time, it greatly reduces the L2 and L3 static energy thanks to the low temperature and EDM-based cache design. Therefore, cryocache reduces the cache energy by 94%. Cryocache also reduces the total energy consumption by 34%, even including the cooling cost. This is the last slide of my presentation. I will summarize my talk as follows. First, we find optimal memories for cryogenic caches. We select SRAM and 3TDM as the optimal memories. Second, we propose the cryogenic optimal cache architecture, or cryocache. Cryocache consists of SRAM-based add-on design and 3TDM-based L2 and L3 design. Finally, we show the potential of CryoCache. CryoCache improved the performance by 80% on average, up to four times on stream cluster. It also greatly reduces the total energy consumption by 34%, even including the cooling cost. Thank you for the listening, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions.